Вы, девочки, красивых любите, Не постоянная у них любовь. Зачем вы, девочки, красивых любите, Не постоянная у них любовь. Why, young ladies, do you always fall in love with a handsome young man? Don't you know that the love of a handsome man is never trustworthy? Traditional Russian folk song. The two men arrived in the Russian village of Pakrovsk on the same day. Daroshka came from the north, the Khachik came from the south. Daroshka came into town, mounted on his steed, and he had men bringing his wares with him, and he carried a cane, and he came wrapped in great big furs, and he came in from the north on this great white steed. The Khachik came from the south. He walked in with only the clothes on his back. And when the Khachik came to town, the Khachik, he explained to everybody that he came from the Caucasus, from the mountains to the south, and he told them that he was a day laborer and that he was looking for work. Please, could someone offer him work here? He said this all in Russian, but he said it with his thick Caucasian Southern accent. And of course, everyone in town murmured, Khachik, Khachik Prishol. They had all heard these stories about those people from the South, about those swarthy people. They can't be trusted, everyone said. You know how they are. Most of them don't even follow the Holy Russian Orthodox Church. Some of them are even Mohammedans down there. Everyone whispered when the Khachik came. When Daroshka came to town, Daroshka didn't say anything. And everyone just assumed that Daroshka must have come from those exotic, beautiful lands up north. From one of those, they'd heard stories. This was in the 16th century. And they had heard stories about these exotic countries, these Nordic countries up north in the Khachik, he came wrapped in all these exotic furs and he could barely, Daroshka came wrapped in these furs and Daroshka could barely even tell them what his name was. Yeah, Daroshka. And everyone swooned. All the ladies in town, some of the men in town too, everyone saw him and said, Oi, Daroshka. Oy, un takoy krasivy, un takoy milly. Uh, Daroshka, he couldn't speak back to them in Russian, but <laughs> that just made him all the more exotic and beautiful and amazing. And they all said, Oy, Daroshka, he doesn't speak Russian, but that's not a problem. I'm sure he speaks some beautiful Nordic language, maybe Old Norse, maybe some language we've never even heard of yet. Now, of course, the Khachik could speak Russian, but everyone criticized him for his accent, for his mispronunciations. And in fact, that's why they called him the Khachik. His name wasn't even Khachik. His name, he had a name. His name was Murad. But nobody bothered to remember his name. They all just called him the Khachik, using that despective, using that disrespectful term for people from the South, because everyone said that when people from the South spoke their own rough, coarse Caucasian languages, they said it sounded like Khach, 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 Khach. So they called him the Khachik. But Daroshka, oh, everyone swore that Daroshka, he was the most noble, the most gracious, the most handsome man they'd ever seen in their lives. Daroshka, he rented a house just on a hill outside of town. And ever since he got installed in his house, everyone came to invite him to tea, to invite him to lunch, to dinner. The men invited him out on hunting parties. They invited him out to go practice archery together. Murat, the Khachik. He stayed in a barn. He found a, a local mujik, Sergei, and Sergei, with serious reservations, he allowed Murad to stay in his stable for a price. And Murad looked for work, however he could find it, in this town of Pakrovsk. Meanwhile, Daroshka, every day he was entertaining the high society of Pakrovsk, sipping tea and eating butzirbrot with all of the most beautiful, eligible young bachelorettes and some of the middle-aged ladies as well, even though they were married, because they all swore that Daroshka was the most noble, the most gracious, the most handsome man they had ever seen. 
Now, a few months after the arrival of these two men, Daroshka from the north, the Khachik from the south, a few months after they arrived, people started to get sick in town. At first they thought it, it must be just a new disease come, maybe a pestilence, maybe even a plague, because so many people were taking sick and take, were bedridden. Well, they sent for a doctor, but the doctor was in the nearest town a long ways away. They had to wait for the doctor to arrive. And of course, everybody said, oh, if only we could speak that beautiful Norse language of Daroshka. I'm sure Daroshka, he's such an ed educated such a, a well-bred man. I'm sure he knows about medicine. He could help our people. Of course, nobody bothered to ask the Khachik. Well, by the time the doctor finally arrived, four people had already died. And the doctor, he performed an autopsy. And when he cut them open and checked their organs, he found their internal organs were filled up with finely ground glass. And that was when everyone shocked realized this was no ordinary disease. No, this was a naslan, a curse. It was black magic. This was a vietrina and yechists, which literally translates as an uncleanliness sent on the wind. Everyone knows that witches and warlocks can send black magic and send curses and sickness on the wind and make it go into your belly and into your gut. Everyone knows that, of course. Well, when they knew that they were dealing with black magic, everyone's eyes turned to the Khachik, including Sergei, the Mujik who let the Khachik stay in his stable. Sergei started watching him and one night, Sergei saw the Khachik sneak out of his stable in the middle of the night. Well, he started following him and he walked by the blacksmith's shop and he psst, whispered for the blacksmith and he followed him. Then the baker followed the blacksmith and soon all the Mujiki, all the farmers, all of them are following in line behind the Khachik watching, where is he going to go? And they follow him up the hill to the house, to the house that Daroshka was renting. Everyone whispered, the Kakun Smuk, Kakun Smuk, how dare he, how dare this Khachik go attack a man so noble, so gracious, so handsome with his black magic from the south. Well, they all followed after Murat. They watched the Khachik climb in the window of Daroshka's house. And they all went up to the window and they saw that it was in the main living room, the Khachik to the living room carrying a lantern. He walked in, carried up into the shadows and they saw the Daroshka stand at that window and stare out into the night air and Daroshka started to speak. And Daroshka, this exotic, beautiful man from the north in all of his northern Nordic furs, he was speaking Russian, perfect, unaccented Russian. And he was whispering, Kill them, kill them all. Dark gods of the forest come to me, give me power. Send them sickness, kill them. Make their bellies swell up like a chimney. Make them dry up and wither like the grass on the steppe. All of this in perfect Russian. And he held up a hand and they saw some glittering powder. It was that ground up glass falling out of his hand. And he held up the hand to blow that ground glass into the wind and send that vietrina and chists that curse out onto the wind to his next victim. And he was about to blow when a voice came from inside Daroshka's house. Stoy! Stoy! Hvatsi duje! It was Murat. The Khachik was there to stop Daroshka from sending the curse. The Khachik walked up and he held Daroshka's arms and he said, that's enough. Hvatsi! That's enough of your black magic, Daroshka. No more. You will not send curses on the wind anymore. Your curses are finished. And that was how the Khachik Murad saved the people of Pakrovsk from a terrible evil that night. Well, they all gathered in the town square and they gave Murad a public apology for not trusting him. And in fact, the mayor of the town came up and apologized. They gave him a room in the finest hotel in town. And, and they say that he lived there till the day he died in that room. 
Now, Daroshka, as they did some research and investigating, they learned that Daroshka, he was not a Norseman from the north at all. But that was how he went from town to town throughout Russia, his own native country. He went playing the part of the foreigner, the exotic, noble, beautiful foreigner to gain people's trust. Now, when they learned that Daroshka was a Russian citizen, they sent him to Moscow to be processed and tried in the, the Tsar's courts. And in the Tsar's courts, Daroshka was found guilty and he was hanged for practicing witchcraft. But until their dying day, some of the women of Pakrovsk, they all swore that there must have been some terrible mistake because they all swore that it was impossible. They were sure that Daroshka was still the most noble, the most gracious, the most handsome man they had ever seen in their lives. Зачем вы, девочки, красивых любите? Не постоянная у них любовь. Дорожка and the curse on the wind. <laughs> 